Welcome back to the ProWorks channel. My name is John, and this is going to be a quick look at my mini barrister bookcase that I just released a few weeks ago. I'm also releasing a set of plans that will be available on my website. There'll be a link in the description below as of the posting of this video. So without further ado, let's just jump right into looking at the bookcase. The first thing I want to talk about is how these boxes stack and interlock. Traditionally, barrister bookcases were modular boxes that could interlock together and keep growing as a unit as the collection of books grew. And so this system here starts off with the base, and there's a board here that is glued in place that will correspond to a gap in the bottom of this box. So I started off by making a full width panel here. I cut the joinery to join the faces, and then I cut this middle piece out first referencing the front on the fence of the table saw and then referencing the back on the fence of the table saw. That way my joinery would stay aligned as I needed it to. This gap was then filled with a separate piece, making sure it was relatively snug but not too tight. And then as you see, it locks in place like that. The next box on top of that corresponds to this piece right here and can interlock just like the one below it. In the plans, I'm calling this piece right here a registration block, and this top box does not have a registration block because it's the top and nothing is supposed to stack on top of it. So this one will just stack on here, like so, and then you have your stack of three boxes. Now if you wanted to, you could make another box that would fit just like here, or you could put two more boxes or three more boxes until you had an unnecessarily unsafe stack of boxes that would probably fall over, but I'll leave that to one of you guys to try out. When I first started designing this box, there was one design element that I really wanted to incorporate, and that was a continuous grain pattern up the sides of these boxes. There was two things that I had to do to make sure that, that I did that successfully, one of which was the joinery on these boxes. Traditionally, I would say the top and bottom of a box being longer than the sides, you would have the ends of those tops and bottoms shown out the sides. So you would have end grain showing out the side here, and the end grain of the sides would be hidden. I went the other way and have the side panels end grain exposed at the top and bottom. And what that does for me is prevent any end grain from disrupting this continuous grain pattern. So it looks like you have one board going up the side of these boxes. The other thing I had to make sure I did was label all of my parts correctly. I, as an example, I cut a rough width board about 20 inches long because this is about 18 inches in height. So I cut it to 20 inches. And when I cut these six inch long boards, I made sure to label them with blue tape and kept them in order. You know, this is the top box left panel, so I call it TL. And this is the middle box, so this is like ML and BL and things like that. So in the plans, I talk about how you should label your pieces throughout the project so that you don't lose them, lose track of them, especially if you're making a batch of them. I made two of these for the video, so that means I had six of these boxes. There's a ton of different parts to keep track of. Another thing I wanted to incorporate was the use of quarter sum material. As I've begun to make more and more smaller projects, I've realized the importance that a long and straight grain, as well as a tight grain, can have on the scale and proportion of a project. So when I, when I scale this down, I want to keep the proportions correct. Now the proportions I'm referring to the height, width, and length so that when you look at it, it doesn't look like a little wonky and cartoonish. This looks like a standard barrister bookcase and it can kind of fool you if you take a picture of it in front of a white background. But what you also need to have is the grain to kind of shrink down with it. So if I take a plain sawn board like this, this is a piece of walnut. It's not a bad piece. In fact, it's an offcut from some project I've done before, so it's, it's probably nice enough. Um, the grain here, this growth ring is about an inch apart, and across a five inch wide board, that doesn't really give this board enough room to kind of do its thing and, and tell you its story. Now, if I were to flip this over on edge, which is what these are, you have a long straight grain and everything looks nice and it doesn't distract from what this project is trying to be. If this was a big dining table or a wide cabinet door that's book matched, this would look really nice and I would have no problem with it because it would look like it's in proportion with the scale of the project. So as we scale down the dimensions, I want to scale down the grain as well. Outside of the modular nature of these boxes, I would say the biggest feature of a barrister bookcase is how the doors kind of pull up and slide back. It's very unique and on larger projects, there is metal hardware that can kind of facilitate this action. But there's also a simple way of just cutting a groove and having a peg that acts as the pivot point. 
and there's some dowels on this door that allow the door to slide forward and back and then close. Now before I get a ton of comments about magnets, I know even my mom mentioned it who one of these cases was for for Christmas. I did plan on incorporating magnets but I just kind of ran out of time and, and figured that these were good enough for now that I didn't really need to go down that rabbit hole of trying to align magnets this late into the project. So if you do build these, putting a magnet, you know, one here and one here, and then one here and one here would make sure this door doesn't kind of swing back and forth. These doors are joined with half lap joints. Now I was going to go with just traditional butt joints and dowels like I do for a lot of projects, but I knew that as I had to drill a hole in here to insert a dowel that would go in the groove, that hole would probably disrupt the dowel joinery and weaken the joint. So I, I ended up just using half lap joints, which are quite strong and they're self squaring in a way. So everything kind of ended up, I would say square enough for what I needed, especially on a small project like this, it can be quite noticeable. Back to the topic of scale and proportion. I had to find hardware in this case, brass knobs that kept within that scale. Now, these are solid brass knobs from Kennedy Hardware. It's not sponsored, but I'll leave a link below. These were the best knobs that I could find online at the right price. Now that's kind of the key. You can spend a lot of money on brass hardware, but in the end I needed 12 of these and they were only $1.15 each. So after shipping, this was like less than a $20 order. And I was left with nice solid brass knobs that kind of did their job. I had to get new screws because these doors are only a half inch thick and the screws I think were meant for three quarter inch or five eighths inch thick material. So that was a, a quick easy fix, but I'm pretty pleased with how these ended up. Looking at the back of the boxes, we have a two part setup to enclose the back. We have a panel that's most of the height that's just glued in place. Even though it's a cross grain glue joint, I'm not really concerned about the wood movement because these panels are relatively thin and short, so I don't really think anything should really happen too catastrophic. Now the other piece in the top goes in after the doors enter from the back. Now the, the doors enter from the back, they slide forward and go down and then you can kind of nail this board in place. And I only nailed it with no glue, just in case anything happens to the doors, I can kind of pull these nails out and get access to the doors. If I have to fix them, if the glass breaks, whatever happens. Back to the base real quick. I sort of juggle between three different designs for the base. I ended up going with the simplest one just for you know, the ease of it and making it and it just kind of looks a little bit nicer, I think with all the straight lines on this box. But I did incorporate the alternate designs in the plans. So you have some scale templates here. This one right here I've used in my apothecary cabinets in the past. And I've also, I also considered using this one that just had a subtle curve across the stretchers. They also use a leg that has a curved uh, inside face. I believe this was the first project I've done using my new mini workbench. And if I didn't mention it in that video, I'll mention it now. This was sort of half novelty, half useful for me. Uh, I did think it was kind of cool just kind of shrinking this down and seeing what it would look like, trying to keep those proportions, which I've said a thousand times this video. This twin screw vise was pretty helpful. And what it does is it raises the workpiece up off my normal work surface, much like a Moxon vise, which is very popular. This twin screw vise raises the workpiece up so that I'm, if I'm drilling dowels, if I'm, if I'm cutting with a little saw, I don't have to bend down. If I'm using a small block plane, I can kind of keep the material up closer to my body so that I'm not bending over and kind of hurting my back, which can kind of happen if you're doing a repetitive batch work. And in this case, I felt a lot more comfortable doing that type of work. I would say these screws are a little too snug as you get closer to driving them home. Uh, I might have to add a little bit more wax or kind of shrink them down a little bit, but that's a project for another day. All right, that's about all I had for this video. I didn't do a voiceover for the original Barrister build. Uh, so there are some things I kind of wanted to talk about, some things that I had common questions about or other things I just wanted to explain that I thought was gonna be a common question. So I got those out there in this video and I did release these plans like I mentioned earlier. So these will be available on my website. These will have step-by-step -step instructions, uh, color images. Uh, there's gonna be a SketchUp file attached to it as well. And there'll be some little tips and tricks that might have not been mentioned in this video that are just kind of too in the weeds for what this video really is. Uh, the templates, like I said, for the base will be to scale if you print this on eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, and yeah, if you do end up getting these plans and making this box, please share it with me, whether it's through email personally or just on social media, please tag Perlaworks. 
Anyways, Happy New Year, and I hope to post a lot more videos this year. See you guys.